Well, this is round four of the New Fish Southfield Spring League. Um, yeah, it's just getting interesting. The story so far is Wayne Bartholomew was leading going into this round. He's one point in front of me and one or two other anglers as well. He's obviously leading on weight as well. It will. It is a weight competition, but obviously tie on points. It will then go to weight. Um, the mission for today for me is to try and get another section win. And the ultimate mission would be to do it in a big weight section so that I can get my weight advantage up as well. So far I've only been in the harder fishing sections so uh, whilst I've won the sections I've kind of it's always been a low weight. The weights are coming from pegs 1 to 10 or in the woods um, as a lot of you know it as. There are two sections over there pegs 1 to 10 so dad's already gone into the pub I'm just going to go and grab a breakfast um, and then get in the draw queue. Hopefully like I said the mission for today is to get a section win and then the next thing is to do it with a good weight to get me up that table. So I'm looking forward to breakfast and I'll see you very shortly in the draw queue. We'll just, yeah, yeah, just give it a draw. Oh, one off Bob. One off, oh, you're just off. 46. 46. 46. 46. 46. 46. 46. Still on board, mate. He's on that one, nice one. Cheers, lads. You are? Second. Second. Nice one. <laughs> then he's in woods, top man. Peg 46. Um, I've not. I haven't been in that area for a long, long time. Um, I haven't fished that many matches here anyway recently, but it's not an area I'm overly familiar with. I've been told it's the second, or about the second ramp as you drive up the lane um, but yeah it looks like just got to fish for a bite simple as that uh, peg 44 is the first in my section I'm obviously 46 so they're the really? five lads that I need they're the five lads that I need to uh, um, to focus on um, possibly not a big weight area but it doesn't matter I've just got to go and win the section and if it's a good weight then that's a bonus first look at the canal no wind um, you can see on the windscreen just starting to rain bit of context for you it was cold last night I was told there was a bit of a frost um, it was one degree driving all the way down here it's now saying three degrees um, as you can see the rain is here now but no wind so I expect it to be flat calm um, but I'll be setting up rods to cover various different options so I'll see you down at the peg Let's turn the lights on. time set up this morning which is nice um a bit of spare downtime i've had i've just been sort some ground weight out in the back of the van bagged it all up ready for the, the, the remaining two matches um it was flat calm when we got here absolutely flat calm the breeze is off the back but as you can see there's a bit of a breeze on it now um it's more over our left shoulder now um it was over our right shoulder but it, it wasn't even breaking the surface but you know I think any ripple on here is going to help it. It is a cold wind. Like I said, on the van, it's on the temperature gauge on the van, it's saying it's now two degrees. Um, but I'm a favour of having a ripple on it as opposed to not having a ripple on it. Certainly if it's off your back anyway. Um, I'm peg 46, as you know, which means peg 44 is the first in the section, 45. There's me with my same setup, three rods that I've had all the way through the series. Um, 47 and then two to my right is the last peg in this section. Um, I've been told we could catch a few fish here. It has been a, a steadier, more reliable area for a few fish. But obviously, um, we never know what to expect. You know, it was really cold last night. Um, and even when they have caught here, it has been a slow start as well. You know, there might be the old person who's had one or two early on, but then it's been like the middle period's been quite rubbish and then they caught later on. So I'm just going to fish for a bite. It's a section when I need. Um, to be nice to get a good weight if I can get a good weight, but that's out of my hands. I'm just going to try and win the section. Um, I'll show you quickly, show you the setup. Same setup all the way through the series, so I'm not going about it too much because you'll be sick of hearing it. Um, I've got the 3.5 meter excess slim. I've got that clipped up at 35 meters, so that's my short line. 
just for your interest a bit of context for you i haven't caught a fish on that line yet all the way through this series but i believe it serves its purpose as a resting line for the longer 50 meter line which i think is more important certainly it has been so far so like i said whilst i haven't caught on the 35 meter line just the time i spent on it has rested the long line and i think it's helped that long line so but who knows i might catch on it today which will be a, an added bonus 50 meter line x c class 3.6 meter a lot of people have asked me which version it is it's the 60 gram version that one the feeder i'm going to be using today if this wind stays how it is i think 40 gram is going to be plenty um i don't think i'll get away with a 30 but that depends on the wind and um, so 40 gram feeder that's a, a 60 gram rod so that's just loaded nicely um, and then I've got an XD setup. That's the biggest setup, the XD with the feeder 5500 reel, and that's clipped up at 60 meters. I hope I don't have to pick that up. The reason why I've got that set up is a, if I see anybody catch longer than my 50 meter line, like 10 meters past or more, I've got that. I can try that if I need to try. It's already clipped up and ready to go. And the other reason is if the conditions change. Uh, you know and the wind suddenly gets severe and stuff that rod will enable me to still fish that 50 meter line it is clipped up at 60 um, because i can't imagine that happening but obviously if that's the case i just need to bring it back 10 meters and then obviously i can still fish that 50 meter line if the conditions deteriorate like they can do on this venue um everything else is the same i'm going to kick off um with a size 16 hook probably maggot on the hook dead maggot and just try and get a bite 15 minute casts I have caught fish a lot quicker than that at stages, <clears throat> but I have caught fish 14 and 15 minutes, so I'm going to kick off that, that's my starting point. The bait tray is basically the same as it has been all the way through the series, I've got a nice cover on it, which helps keep that rain off, it's stopped raining now thankfully. In here, just the same setup, I'm going to go over it because I know not everyone's seen every video in this series. Obviously my ground weight there, I've got a tub of water for washing your hands you can add extra water to your ground bit and all that sort of stuff i've got some dead fluoro pinkies i've got some dead reds in there they were just frozen overnight uh, i've got some worms got to have worms when we're fishing for bream i'm going to chop some of them up at the start and just chop them up in batches because sometimes they don't want them sometimes they do so i don't want to chop up loads at the start in case they don't want them then i'm just wasting worms that is just spare ground bait so i can top that up nice and easy if i, if I use all that there's two pints there believe it or not and um, that is a two pint mix and you can see there's plenty there for fishing with i'm going to be fishing with these sorts of feeders the little horizons as you can imagine they don't hold a massive amount of ground bait but you've got to have extra ground bait with you in case it is a red letter day and you've got to put a bigger feeder on feed more and cast more you know you've got the ground bait there ready to go you don't want to be wasting time having to get off your box and mix more mix but two pints is not too much if you're going to waste a bit um, just think about the bait that you're using basically ground bait is expensive enough without wasting it and in there i've just got some, some more dead baits in case i use all those and some worms that is it really nice and simple same routine I feed the 50 meter line first then the 35 meter line and start fishing at 50 meters and just keep my eye out what's happening I'll be watching up and down the bank both ways. Someone's got a pole up there. I think that might be Steve Whitfield. And I can see down that way as well. I'm obviously going to be watching everybody, but it's the main lads in this section that I'm going to be watching. That is two anglers to my left and two anglers to my right. Ten minutes to go, I'm going to chop some worm up and hopefully I'll have something to report after the first hour.
Steve Whitfield's got one first chuck on two minutes. He's not in my section, but it's nice to see an early fish. Snags in here or what? Twice that locked up then. Hey? Oh, well, I've just found it. <laughs> Twice that locked up then. a good start. I've had uh, two fish in the first 20 minutes. To be honest, I actually pricked one first cast after eight minutes and I thought that was going to be the kiss of death like it usually is on this venue. But, but then I opened my first fish and it snagged me up twice coming back. I didn't know there were any snags here but someone's just told me this is known for having a snag in it. So that second fish I opened which was slightly bigger. I just played it with the rod up in the air, up in the air just to make sure. Stood up as well. I might have to do that on every fish now. So I've got two in the net. Nobody else in this section has caught yet. But the lad two to my left has definitely missed a bite and he might have just missed another bite. But there's no other fish caught yet.
Which to me, he's just had two in two chokes, and then I've had probably four casts without anything. Just had a bite out of the blue, um, hooked my biggest fish, um, and that snag's causing me some real problems. There's something about two metres back from where I'm fishing, but that one just completely locked up, um, and that's probably halfway back. It's, well, probably 30 metres out. Um, I could have just pulled for a break, but I wanted to take my time, try and get it out, walked up and down the bank, had a rod right up in the air, just trying to free it up, hoping it was going to swim out. I'm glad I took my time with it now, because I managed to get it out, um, and that's my biggest fish, you know, it's easier, but it's a three pounder. Very important fish, um, the up length was all cut up as well, obviously where it had been in or around that snag, whatever it is. So as you probably saw, I just ripped the up length off and up, put a fresh up length back on again now. Um, so the lot of my left has got two fish, um, other than that there aren't any more fish caught in this section. Um, it's it's pretty cold, I've got to admit, there's loads of toe on it, the tip's bent round now, that's a two ounce tip. Um, but I've just got to try and, you know, land everything I hope now and just try and be patient, 50 minutes, that one, caught that one on 13 minutes. Obviously it took me 10 minutes to get it out, but it was worth, worth it. Still at 50 metres. And I haven't been on my short line yet. I'm just going to stick on this line for now and just see, see how, you know, how, it, how it progresses. Bang on halfway, we're two and a half hours in. Um, very little has changed. A lot of my left has had one more fish, but it's only a small fish, it looked as though it were about five or six ounces, probably a roach. So he's got three fish. Um, the lad on two to my left has got one small fish that looked about eight ounces or about eight, ten ounces, I think. Two lads on my right are not caught yet. So I'm still in front in the section, but I haven't had a single indication since that since that bream what, what snagged me up so the wind's got up a bit now it, it's not really affecting the water as such because um, it's skimming it's coming over our backs but it's absolutely freezing dad was sat with me for 10 minutes but it's just not very pleasant at all so he's gone back to the van now he's got the right idea um, it, it's just I, I can't see any fish being caught at the moment right the way down to my left hand right it's very very slow at the moment. I could do with another fish just to try to kind of keep in front. Um, I might have a quick look on that 35 meter line. Just one cast just to see if there's anything there. And obviously if not then that will have rested my 50 meter line for you know 15 minutes. Which might nick me a fish but it's nice to get another fish now just to try and keep him from. Other than that as in the last match, the first, sorry, the middle two hours were, were rubbish. Then it was just a case of waiting for the last hour when you're hopefully going to get a couple more fish. But I'd like to get a bit more of a lead before we go into that last hour, just in case. Well, it's not getting any warmer. <laughs> it's actually got windier, and that wind chill's really, really cold. Um, I think it's nearly two hours now. I've not had a sign, not had another bite, nothing. Same on my left, both pegs. The lad on my right, I don't think he's caught yet. But the lad two to my right, the last in this section, he's he's had a good fish, he's had a three pounder, and then he's had a small fish. Um, and that's it. So there's, I think there's less than two hours to go now. I've just gone on my short line, I've set the long line up, fed it, and I've just had a chuck shot. I'm gonna have a 15 minute cast on this. It's been in 10 minutes already. I'm going to give it 15 minutes and then go back on my long line if I'm not caught on it and hopefully nick a fish when I do after that rest. Other than that it's going to go right to the wire. Um, as I expected, certainly last 45 minutes will be very, very important again. Not very exciting for you watching I know, but when there are no bites there's no action. Hopefully the last 45 minutes is, uh, is going to come alive again and I'll catch a few more fish.
really frustrating. Um, I've ended up with four fish, <coughs> losing my voice. I was at the Stonely Tattler show yesterday, I was talking all day, that's why I lost my voice. Um, I've ended up with four fish, that's it, really frustrating, I can't believe that I've gone the last three hours with just one fish. It was something that happened last week, middle two hours, um, I never had a bite and it's happened again today. Um, I don't know, it's something I need to look at, I don't really know why it's happening. But anyway, uh, I've ended up with four fish, I've got about nine pound maximum, I don't think I've got more than nine pound. Um, the two lads on my left, I don't think that they beat me. The lad on my, lad on my right, I've not seen him, I've not actually seen him catch, I don't know if he has caught. But the lad two to my right, he's got four fish as well. Now one of his fish is quite small, but the bream that he has got is very big. So I've got a feeling it's going to be very, very close between me and him, I think. But having said that, I've only looked at him a few times and I've seen him catch four fish. I find it hard to believe that all of the time when I haven't looked at him that he's not caught fish. So I've got a feeling that uh, he must have got at least another fish not on top of that, he must have. Um, so I think he might have won the section, but I don't really know. So I'm gonna get a bit of kit packed away um, and then just wait for the scales. the section I can't believe it but there we go it just shows you when you're on here fishing with small baits when the tip goes on it can be anything the lad two to my right he's done brilliant to catch four fish um, but his four fish have been smaller than mine um, all four of my well I've had one three pound the other three were, were decent fish um, but three of his fish have been smaller so that's how it goes but section win that's the main thing um, eight pound nine I've ended up weighing so yeah I'm back down at the van now, so I'm just going to get all this clobber off. I'm going to head back to the headquarters, go and have a look at the results, and find out how the rest of the lads have, uh, have got on. But so that's put me on three, three firsts and a second. We can drop one anyway. Our worst result with two matches to go. Job done. And don't forget, if you enjoy live matches like this and you want to see more of them, and you don't want to miss the final two rounds as well as all the other match fishing updates, hit subscribe. That way you'll be kept in the loop with everything. Thanks for watching.